how to make a London fog. That's what we'll be doing today on 11 with Jamie. So it's gray and drizzly outside and it's perfect sweatshirt weather. So I'm wearing my hoodie right now because I pretty much always wear hoodies once it starts getting cold. So I thought it would be a perfect day to teach you how to make a London fog. Now, a London fog is a concoction they made, I'm pretty sure in Seattle. Better do some research on that. And it's basically a milk steamer that has Earl Grey tea in it and some vanilla syrup and maybe some lavender syrup. That's what we're going to make today. So keep watching. All right, I'm back. I did some research, thank goodness for the internet. Let me tell you a little bit more about the London fog because I think maybe there are some myths are going around, but this is the one it says here on the top. So Earl Grey is mixed with milk and vanilla syrup. It was invented in Vancouver, Canada. See, Americans trying to take all the credit. Created in the 1990s, rock on 90s. And the woman's name was Mary Loria. And she was pregnant and she used to go to Vancouver's Buckwheat Cafe. So thank you, Buckwheat Cafe. And thank you, Mary Loria. Without you, we would not have the London Fog, which is so good. And we're going to be making it today. Yay! So I've got some hot water in here already kind of warming up my pot. We want the tea to be as hot as we can possibly make it because we're going to be blending it in a blender in a couple of minutes. And that just sort of cools everything down. And before you know it, you're going to have a cold London fog and that's not very good. I've got my pot already warming. I put some almost boiling water in here. And in the last second, once this is boiling, I'm going to dump out that water, add the tea bag, and then add my new boiling water. And that's going to create a tea that's nice and hot. Once this gets going and it's hot, we're going to have to just move quickly. So I better tell you now what kind of Earl Grey I like. Now there's all kinds of Earl Grey out there. It's very popular. It's been around since the 1700s. So Earl Grey has lots of different legends surrounding the tea and how it first came into being. So go ahead and check it out online and see what you think the true origins of Earl Grey tea are. But as you know, from our video where I tried breakfast in Paris from Stash, you know that Earl Grey tea is a black tea with bergamot oil added to it. We will be adding this. And this one is also Stash. It's called double bergamot Earl Grey. So there's extra bergamot oil added to it, which is fine by me because I love the way it tastes and smells. So I'm gonna get these open. I am going to do two tea packets for this particular brew because I'm probably going to have a pretty large cup. All right, I'm going to get this boiling. I'm going to have to get a cordless one of these. So my teapot's nice and hot because I had it warming. I'm gonna pour that out. Handy that my sink is right there. I'm going to drop the tea bags in. And in goes the water. I'm going to take this little tea cozy that I made. This is probably not necessary in the summer, but on a grave day like today, it's a good thing to have because if the house is cold, you don't want the cold house making your tea all cold while it steeps. So I've been blabbing for about 30 seconds. And so I will set the timer for about one minute and 30 seconds. While we are waiting for this to brew, what could I tell you about? Let's see. I don't know. I made this tea cozy because this is such a cute little teapot and it was so small. And I needed something, so I went online and found a video on how to make one. I'll put that link in the description below so that you can make your own tea cozy if you'd like. This one I made with a cotton twill. 
that I found at the fabric store and it's got cotton batting, two layers, and then a cotton twill on the inside. So yeah, if you are crafty, you can go ahead and make your own. Maybe one day I'll sell them. I don't know, but I think, I think for now, break out your sewing machine and make yourself a tea cozy if you'd like. We've got 15 more seconds, but now I've got to go get the other stuff I need so that I can make the rest of the, there it goes. The most important thing is after the timer goes off is just to get the tea bags out. <laughs> out they come. And now while I get the rest of the stuff, I'm going to put this back on. You just have to be careful when you're taking it out that you don't accidentally tip over the tea pot, which I've done. I'm just going to add the tea to my blender. It's nice and hot. Do you see that? And we had lots of stuff going on during that intermission. So that's a great way to keep it hot. So now to that, I'm going to add, I have some milk. This milk, uh, I just, I didn't bring it to a boil almost. And in it goes. To this, I'm gonna add a little bit of vanilla. I always store my vanilla pods in my vanilla container. That means I always have like little vanilla beans kind of building up at the bottom. It's kind of shake that up. Oh, another tip that my friend taught me. She's so brilliant. Thank you so much, Beth. She, when she gets these, she doesn't peel the whole thing off. She just pokes a little tiny hole in the top. So if you have a cap like this and you don't want to have it pouring all over the place, um, you just do that little, little hint from Beth. Thank you, Beth. So I just squirt in a couple of drops of vanilla. And then to that, I'm actually going to add a little bit of cream. I don't think that's necessarily traditional, but I add it anyway because it's really good. Lid on, and then we're going to blend. Once upon a time, Blend Tech did actually send me a blender for free. That was back when I was a blogger named Sophista Mom. Don't look me up anymore because somebody's hacked my site and they use some of my stuff and then other stuff is, looks kind of crappy. I almost forgot the sweetener. This is this gorgeous honey that we got in Northern Idaho in this, no, in Spokane near Green Bluff called Moose Meadow Apiary. So thank you, Moose Meadow Apiary. They didn't pay me. I'm going to take probably a good tablespoon. This is a lot of London fog. This is enough for two people, one for me and one for you. There's honeycomb in here, so there's going to be some melted bits of wax when this is all over, but that's okay. Delicious. Now we'll blend it up. And now the best part, these beautiful glasses. <laughs> so I'm gonna pour one and another one. So there you have it, a perfect London fog, a gorgeous drink for a wonderful, blustery, Englandy feeling day. It tastes just like I said, it tastes like a hug on a rainy day when you're wearing sweatshirts. It's a great alternative to hot chocolate, actually. It just has this cozy, snuggly kind of taste. Next time you're on a wintry day and you want something delicious, Grab yourself some Earl Grey and with all the stuff that you probably already have in the kitchen, you can whip up one of these amazing drinks or just get one from your favorite barista when you're at your local coffee shop. They'll know what a London Fog is. Be sure to subscribe and I will bring you more videos on tea and things to bake for your tea and things to talk about while you're drinking your tea. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.